Good morning, Berlin. I'm Danny Asimov. Last week, 300 Berlin students and faculty participated in the Blue Lakes Field Day, where two to three students took care and participated in different activities with children. Students got up to six hours for painting, playing sports, and even jumping in a bounce house with special needs children. The principal of Blue Lakes called an experience of a lifetime for the students. The Battle Like a Wolverine Breast Cancer Awareness 5K is this weekend, where all proceeds go to breast cancer research. Make sure to hydrate, get rest, and be ready to run, Wolverines. The Belen Alumni Tour kicked off this year in New York City. After attending a mass in the private chapel at Xavier High School, Father Willie hosts 45 alumni for the dinner. These events help connect alumni with the school and, most importantly, with each other. One of the most inspiring moments this year was when two alumni from the class of 1953 saw each other for the first time since their graduation. Neither one realized the other was living in New York City. The next one up is Washington, D.C. on January 20th. Thanks, guys. The widow of one of the four servicemen killed in Niger says she still has many questions about her husband and how he died. And also says a Florida congresswoman's account of her conversation with President Trump is accurate. I want to know why it took them 48 hours to find my husband. Maisha Johnson told ABC's Good Morning America Monday that nearly three weeks after an ISIS-led ambush in Niger left her husband and three other U.S. servicemen dead. She has more questions than answers. I don't know how he got killed, where he got killed, or anything. I don't know that part. They never told me, and that's what I've been trying to find out since day one, since October 4th. The Pentagon and the FBI are among those investigating the attack on October 4th. The condolence call President Trump made to Maisha Johnson also has been at the center of a political feud. Florida Congresswoman Federica Wilson, a close family friend, was in the car when the widow put the call on speakerphone. Soon after, Wilson criticized the president's call as disrespectful. That sparked a spat with the White House that continued throughout the weekend, with the president calling Wilson wacky and a disaster for Dems. Maisha Johnson told ABC News Wilson's account is accurate. The president said that he knew what he signed up for, but it hurts anyways. And I was, it made me cry because I was very angry at the, the tone of his voice and how he said it. I heard him stumbling on trying to remember my husband's name. And that what hurt me the most because if my husband is out here fighting for our country and he risks his life for our country, why can't you remember his name? The president responded via Twitter Monday morning saying, quote, I had a very respectful conversation with the widow of Sergeant Le David Johnson and spoke his name from the beginning without hesitation, end quote. A White House official confirmed the West Wing did attempt to expedite the condolence letters to the families of the fallen soldiers after the president's remarks in the Rose Garden last week. Officials have said during this, during this process, a discovery was made that there was a bureaucratic reasons for some of the letters had not gone out to some families. Sentence hearing started Monday, but the hearing went into recess until Wednesday due to an attorney family emergency. The 31-year-old soldier pled guilty last week to misbehavior before the enemy in desertion. He walked away from his outpost in Afghanistan in 2009. The Taliban captured him hours later. Bengal says he was tortured during the five years of his captivity. He was released by the Taliban in controversial exchange for five prisoners at Guantanamo Bay. Bangdel faces up to life in prison. Hey guys, here's your scoop for today. If you're thinking about an experience this summer for your educational, spiritual, and personal growth, Belen's Overseas Study Program to Europe might be the answer. Since 1994, the Social Studies Department has created annual summer travel programs to expand the worldview of 958 Belen students and family members. The 2018 itinerary to Ireland and Scotland offers an enriching and reasonably priced experience into the character of two of the most influ influential European homelands in American history. Each step of the journey has been planned to complement the goals of the Belen Jesuit curriculum. Come join in. Your invitation to Ireland and Scotland information meeting on October 24th, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Cosquilla Hall at Belen. Special guest speaker, Mr. Ian O'Flaherty, Honorary Consul of Ireland in Miami, will announce his plan of assisting the Belen trip in the Republic of Ireland and with Irish President Michael D. Higgins. It will be a pleasure for chaperones, Father Christian Science, Ms. Ms. Lanyas, and to meet you and discuss the advantages of this experience for your son and family. EF Tours co customized website for this Belen trip June 21st to June 28th 
at EFTourist.com. The Belen Jesuit Builders Club wants your candy, but don't worry, it's for a good cause. Help them support our heroes by donating your excess Halloween candy. Please bring your candy to Ms. Diana Fernandez. Or if you have any questions, please contact Ms. Diana Fernandez. Hey guys, here's your weather for today. Right now it's not looking like we have a lot of rain coming, but in the afternoon we should expect some scattered thunderstorms. Let's look at the numbers. So we have a high in the low 80s and a low in the low 70s. It's getting slightly cooler now. Relative humidity at 75% and the chance of rain is 70%. Now on to the next three days. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are looking great. Well, not so much Wednesday with a high of 80 and a low of 65 on Wednesday and then a cooler day on Friday and getting a bit hotter again on uh, Thursday sorry and getting a bit hotter on Friday there should be scattered thunderstorms on Wednesday with a 30 percent chance of rain it's gonna be a great sunny day on Thursday with a 10 percent chance and on Friday we're gonna have again just a 10 percent chance of rain but it's gonna be partly cloudy that's all your weather for today now let's pass it on to sports Thanks, Leo, and hello, Wolverine Nation. Last Friday, the varsity football team took on Felix Varela High School and won 55 to 12. Don Chaney had five carries for 142 yards and three touchdowns, breaking the single-season touchdown record. Joey Placencia also had a 53-yard touchdown catch. The Wolverines will play Southwest High School this Friday at home. Go out and support your Wolverines in this big district matchup. The crew team participated in the Charles Regatta in Boston this past weekend and placed 17th out of 85. Next regatta for the crew team is November 4th and 5th in Chattanooga, Tennessee. This past weekend, our Special Olympics football team, the Wolfpack, participated in the district championship games at Felix Varela High School Saturday morning. The team coached by senior Javier Guerrero and junior Guillermo Quintero needed two wins to qualify for states. After winning a close game against City of the Rouse team, the team fell short to our Pride Academy and finished with a 1-1 one one overall record. And the team will now focus on basketball and prepare for the season ahead. High school basketball tryouts will be held the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of November. Last Saturday, the Hurricanes took on Syracuse University and won 27-19. Next up, UM has a conference matchup against North Carolina. This Sunday, the Dolphins took on division rival New York Jets and came back to win by a score of 31-28. Jay Cutler got hurt, and backup Matt Moore came through with two touchdowns and 188 yards. Matt Moore has been named the starter for Week 8's week Thursday night matchup against the Ravens. Last night, the Miami Heat beat the Atlanta Falcons by a score of 104 to 93. Josh Richardson led the team in tw points with 21. They are on a two-game winning streak and would like to continue that on Wednesday night against the Spurs. The first game of the World Series starts tonight. Clayton Kershaw will start for the Dodgers and Dallas Keuchel for the Astros. That's all for sports. Back at the desk. Thanks, Mario. Make sure to follow us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook for latest news and pictures. I'm Danny Esteban. And I'm Stefano Pinto. Thanks for watching and stay golden, Wolverines.